Now the honourable member, the honourable member will resume his seat when I when I stand, and I just remind the member that having answered the question, he shouldn't go on to make a speech. And I think it's something today all sides of the House need to be aware of. Some questions have been too long and some answers have been too long. I think there's some fault on both sides. Do we come now to question number, question number nine? John Boscowan. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Justice and asks, on what date is the government planning to repeal the Electoral Finance Act and introduce new electoral law? Mr. Speaker. Honourable Simon Power. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as part of its first 100 days commitments, the government intends to repeal the. Well, that member should go back to his seat. Oh, that's Order. right, he doesn't have one. Right. Order. Um, as part of its first 100 days uh, commitments. Order. Members, we've lost a fair bit of time today with. Uh, unnecessary interjections, and the, I'm sure members of the House would like to see a little more decorum than that. The Honourable Simon Power. As part of its first 100-day commitment, the Government intends to repeal the Electoral Finance Act 2007 and replace it with an interim regime by the 26th of February 2009. The precise date is yet to be determined and will depend on the cooperation of other parties in the House, which I hope will be forthcoming. Sup supplementary, Mr. John Biscowan. Supplementary to the Minister, does the Minister support free speech? And if so, does he agree that political parties should have the right to purchase their own broadcasting time outside of taxpayer funded allocations? Honourable Mr. Simon Speaker, Power. By and large, yes. The Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Mr Speaker, can the Minister advise whether the ACT Party has requested that the repeal bill contains a retrospective provision to annul the ACT Party supporters' complaint about the Heidi Hyde jacket, which has caused the Honourable Rodney Hyde to be embarrassed and led him to concede that the public had a right to be furious about what was nothing more than a stunt? Mr Speaker. Honourable Simon Power. I can advise the member I have no, no such knowledge of such a request. Point of order. Point of order, the Honourable Rodney Hyde. There is a requirement under standing orders that questions are actually factually accurate. And I was furious, but I wasn't furious with the support of the ACT Party. I love them all. I was furious about that crazy law that Leanne Darzell and the Green Party passed. Order. It is not the, what the member has raised is not actually a point of order. However, what he might have raised was that the Honourable Leanne Dalzell's question was actually not in order because standing orders do not provide for that kind of information to be put in a supplementary question where he is bringing into question what other members may or may not have, have said. If she wants to check standing orders, I'm sure she'll find that. The, uh, Chester Borrows. Point of order, the Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Mr Speaker, I seek leave to table the article from the Herald on the 4th of December that quoted the Honourable Member. The leave is sought to table that document. Is there any objection? There is no objection. Could I just make it clear? Order. Could I just make it clear to Honourable Members? It was not, it was not that she raised the issue. It was the manner in which she raised it. If she wishes to check standing order... Uh, the standing orders do with respect to questions. It spells out what they're allowed to contain and not allowed to contain, and that kind of reference to the material is out of order. Supplementary, Supplementary the Honourable Phil Goff. Did the Minister's earlier answer to Mr Buscowan imply that he is contemplating amending the Broadcasting Act to allow wealthy vested interests to spend as much as they like during an election campaign or if that's not what he was implying, what was he trying to say? Honourable Simon Power. Uh, I was uh, referring to the first part of the question, Mr Goff, which was, did I support free speech? Oh. Chester Borrows. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister. Order. Members should show respect to other members in the House. Chester Borrows. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what reports has he seen regarding the potential for cross-party support for reform of electoral laws. 
Hon. Simon Power. Uh, Mr Speaker, I have been sufficiently encouraged by statements made by the Leader of the Opposition since the election, which suggest that there is now a willingness to participate in a bipartisan approach toward the reform of electoral administration. Uh, since cross-party consensus has historically been the hallmark of electoral reform in New Zealand, the Government believes this path is most likely to lead to enduring legislative frameworks. John Biscowan. Supplementary to the Minister, Mr Speaker. Does he think it fair and reasonable that at the last election ACT was restricted to $100,000 while the taxpayer contributed around $1 million each to each of Labor and National's broadcasting spend and would he consider allowing smaller political parties like ACT to spend their own money at least to match the two big old parties? Mr Speaker. Honourable Simon Power. And Mr Speaker, I'm sure that all issues of fairness and matters relating to parties of all sizes, both in this House represented presently and potentially represented inside this uh, House in the future, uh, will be taken into consideration and factored into an enduring legislative framework solution, which we hope all parties will participate in. Come now to question 10. Honourable Jim Anderton. Mr Speaker, uh, my question is to the Minister of Agriculture and asks, is he aware of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry briefing for incoming ministers that states, quote, the agriculture, food and forestry industries are the core of our economy, major determinants of our employment and social well-being, and key drivers of our land, water and biological resource use, end quote, and if so, how many times was the word agriculture used in the speech from the throne? Mr Speaker. Honourable David Carter. Mr Speaker, yes, I am aware and was extremely pleased to see that the briefing recognises what national policy has been for the last many years. Unlike the opposition, we have always supported New Zealand agriculture and have never considered it a sunset industry, as Labor did previously. The word agriculture was mentioned in the speech from the throne, but more importantly, the speech promised action in areas of real concern to farmers, RMA, a more balanced ETS, increased infrastructure and the removal of inefficient red tape, all areas that the member and his colleagues did nothing about over the last nine years. Point of order, the Honourable Dr Michael Cullen. Speaker, I recall you stating publicly um, that you were going to take a firmer line in terms of the nature of ministerial answers to certain kinds of questions, and indeed we've had a discussion about these matters. But this question, Mr Speaker, asks, first of all, is the minister aware of something to which the answer is yes or no? And a very simple closed question. If so, how many times is the word agriculture used? Now, the answer to that question is a number. Uh, and this is a very good example, I think, of the kind of question where you're implying that you will be getting ministers to actually answer the question rather than go off into a broad political dissertation. This being the point of order, the Honourable David Carter. The minister or the member may not have heard, but I said the word agriculture was mentioned in the speech and then went on to mention the number of other things that were mentioned as well, far more important to New Zealand farmers. I, I, it's actually simple. Order, 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 Dr. Cullen. The point of order made by the Honourable Dr. Cullen, I accept absolutely that uh, uh, I think where ministers are asked a question, we want to try and avoid lots of extra information being, additional information being.